for joining us. Thanks for having me. Is this an autobiography? Is it a biography? How, how did all this come to be? It all came to be. Uh, it's a biography uh, of George Herbert Walker Bush, who has deep St. Louis ties. Sure. You know, that's where the Walker comes from. Uh, and, and the George and the Herbert, actually, <laughs> come to think of it. So three out of four come right from right there. Uh, I went up and met him uh, 18, uh, 17 years ago, 1998, uh, and almost immediately knew that this was a, much, a very underappreciated man. What struck me about him was his quiet, persistent charisma. Uh, if you only knew him from television and Dana Carvey and what the media had, done, had portrayed him as, I think you would have thought of him as a not particularly interesting buttoned-up wasp. I found him to be fascinating. I found him to be you know, the last great statesman of the Cold War era, the last president of the greatest generation, and a man whose accomplishments, the farther we get from them, loom ever larger. He, he's no question he's a war hero. He survived an, a, a harrowing experience yeah. in the Pacific Ocean. But he, he clearly wanted to say something, and he chose you to say it, in a sense. He did. There were, there were two elements to this. Uh, his White House diaries, both as vice president under P Ronald Reagan, to whom, with whom he was very close, actually, and his own presidential diaries from 1989 to 1993, he dictated. Uh, it was, he would take a tape recorder, record his thoughts a couple times a week but on average, and he shared that audio with me, uh, the transcripts of, of all of that, without condition. You know, presidents don't usually do that. Uh, he had no control over the project. Uh, I took the book down to him once it was published about two weeks ago. Gave him one of the early copies. Actually, I gave him my only copy, come to think of it. Uh, <laughs> but he lived the life, so I figured he deserved it. Um, and somebody asked him, you like this, somebody asked him the other day, uh, have you read Meacham's book? And he says, well, you know, I kind of know how it turns out. <laughs> uh, so, um, but he gave me the diaries and then granted me as much time as I wanted to talk to him. So from about 2006 to, through last December, uh, through uh, uh, 14, uh, and actually even in, in, into this summer, uh, he was still answering questions for me. And he did want to go on the record uh, about Vice President Cheney and Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld. Uh, he did not think that they, their kind of swaggering culture uh, had served the president very well. And one of the things about George Herbert Walker Bush, who was once the director of the CIA, is he doesn't say things he doesn't mean. I went back to him. Uh, this is the full backstory. Uh, I went back to him in last December and showed him those comments again. Uh, and I said, now, Mr. President, I can't take them off the record, but if you want to say, I made these remarks in the heat of the moment, I've reconsidered, you know, I'll do a footnote and, and say that. And he looked me dead in the eye, and never forget it, and he said, that's what I said. Yeah. John Meacham, our guest, the book is called Destiny and Power. All the pre- uh, attention on this book is what he said about Cheney and Rumsfeld. But what's not getting as much attention is ultimately he blames his son a little bit. Does he not? That's, that's very astute. Uh, I've been surprised by that, too. Yes, uh, he said the buck stops there. Uh, ultimately, a president is responsible for his administration. Um, his central problem with uh, issue question about his uh, about his son was the use of very harsh rhetoric. Uh, he singled out the phrase axis of evil. Uh, Bush 41 did not think that would be historically beneficial. Uh, but there's an irony there, and I think it's an important one for, for your folks who love history and love biography. You know, there was a George Bush who talked about Saddam Hussein in terms of good versus evil. And there was a George Bush who was willing to go to war with Saddam even if Congress gave, did not give him the okay. And that was George Herbert Walker Bush. Uh, in 1990 and 91. One of the revelations in the diary is that on five to six different occasions, he actually said, I am willing to be impeached in 1990 and 91 if the Congress wants to try to stop me from throwing Saddam out of Kuwait. So what I think that tells us is that you never really know what's going to happen until you're behind that desk. Yeah, great point. And the great thing about these diaries uh, and, and the the historical significance of them is it's as close as most of us are ever going to get 
to understanding what it's like to be president in a tumultuous time, minute by minute. Destiny and Power is the book. John Meacham is the author, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Lots to get to. We don't have enough time, clearly. That's why people need to go run and buy the book. Mm -hmm. What did he say about Bill Clinton? Oh, he, he likes Clinton a lot, although he did say, he said, I like Bill, but he talks all the time. Uh, and I actually had to put it in italics in the book because he drew it out so much. You know, it was like, you know, a southerner all the time. Um, and the other funny thing he says is, you know, Bill's always saying, you know, there are 4,200 windmills in Nigeria. Who the hell knows there are 4,200 windmills in Nigeria? How do you check this? You know, he just, how do you know? And he, and he just talks and talks and talks. Uh, I think it's a legitimate friendship. Uh, they are not as close to Hillary, uh, to Senator Clinton, um, in a classic George Bush formulation, because he is the most polite man who ever lived. He, t he, he told me, he said, we like Hillary, but we don't know her, um, which is sort of a classic Bush, Bush expression. Um, you know, it, it's an amazing family. It's, uh, I go all the way back through the Walkers in St. Louis, um, through the Bushes in Columbus. Uh, and as you pointed out, he's a war hero. He was chairman of the Republican National Committee during Watergate, for God's sake. What second prize? <laughs> Um, ambassador to the UN, served two terms in Congress, director of the CIA, envoy to China, vice president for eight years. You know, it, it's, it's the kind of experience and the kind of life that we're not going to see again. And I believe the 20th century ended, essentially, on the night Bill Clinton defeated him in 1992. The book is called Destiny and Power, John Meacham, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Good luck with the book. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. 728, Big 550, KTRS. You know, that's an I was going to say, that's an interview that you can, we could have gone on. Oh, my goodness. You had so many great stories. Yeah, no, it's, it's, this is a book where you sit and you devour it. Yes. Yeah, you sit and you read with a fine tooth comb every little nugget because John Meacham knows how to write. He knows how to tell a story. He knows how to spin a yarn. And his subject mm -hmm. matter is somebody who basically was had a seat at the table for the second half of the 20th century. And like you said, there will not be another president like no, that. No, no. Uh,